today the, the mass burial for Mr. Work. The mass is burial for Mr. Robert Woodall. And the epistle for this mass is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul of Thessalonians, chapter 4. Brethren, we will not have you ignorant concerning them that are asleep, that you be not sorrowful, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even as them, even, even so, them who have slept through Jesus will, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them who have slept. For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with commandments, and with the voice of an angel, an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet Christ unto the air, and so shall we be always with the Lord, wherefore comfort ye one another with these words. And you can stand for the gospel, which is taken out according to St. John chapter 11. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother would not have died. But now also I know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give to thee. And Jesus saith to her, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha saith to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And every one that liveth and believeth in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? And she said to him, Yea, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into this world. Thus for the words of today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today, a few considerations on this sacred mystery of death. And particularly, in our world, and through the eyes of Samson. You know that when God created the world, he did not intend for man to die. All the other creatures, St. Thomas says, death is natural to them. And then the other creatures were meant to die. But God said, let us make man unto our own image and likeness. And unto his own image and likeness he made him. God doesn't die. God never ceases in his magnificence. God doesn't grow old. God doesn't become sick. Therefore, he intended that a special gift would be given to Adam and to Eve, which is one of the preternatural gifts that was given to them. It's a special gift. Our bodies naturally die. It's normal, like the animals. But God made our bodies to never die because of a special gift. They will be like unto him. And our bodies also are different from the animals because they're made to go up. Our forehead is made to look up. Our eyes are made to look up. Even the eagle that flies in the air, his eyes are upon the ground. His eyes are upon the dirt. He is looking for the food below. Human beings alone live on the ground, but they are looking up. And the devil doesn't like that since he was cast into hell. It is always trying to pull our eyes down. This is death to us. This is death. Death actually came into the world when, our, when, when Adam decided to look down upon his own pride, look down upon his own pleasure, look down upon his own world and say, I am going to be my own God. I don't need to look up to God anymore. I'm going to find God here. I don't need to find heaven and walking with God and talking with him like Eve and I do each day. I don't need to walk with God anymore because I can be my own God. I can have my own happiness, and I can find my happiness right here on this earth. And he looked down, and he took a forbidden fruit from a tree, and he brought it down. And by his bringing down with his eyes, he brought death into the world. Our world, 
2016, the end of the 20th century, now the beginning of the 21st century, has more death in it than any other age in the history of the world. There has always been death, but nothing like our times. There is more death now. Every family knows death because they're broken. And when they have children, they abort them and murder them in the womb. They contracept them before they're born. If they make it to this earth, they make sure that they're broken up in homes and they're separated. Death is a separation. Death is a ripping apart. That's all we know in our world. Separation and ripping apart and death. This came into the world 6,000 years ago. Evolution is stupidity and garbage. God created the world 6,000 years ago in a perfect state. And in that perfect, wonderful world, everything was magnificent until Adam decided to take his eye off of heaven. He decided to look down. He decided no longer to be a reflection of the blessed trinity. And what happened? Death came into the world. And death is a terrible punishment. We all have to face it. As sacred scripture tells us, it is given for all men to die. And after death, the judgment. So all must die. It's a terrible thing. And it was not intended by God in the beginning that we die. And we all face it. And now in our world, it's interesting about our world today, it's very interesting, that in our world today, where we consider death, everybody talks about life. Everybody talks about pleasure. And even when you have death, they take makeup, put it on the body. Why well, prefer the, the funerals in India? You don't do that. This is the death. We know what death is. But what happens? They put him make. Oh, he looks so nice. He looks so good. And they don't consider the soul. And they don't consider death, even at death. Why is that? When you live with Christ, when you have life, you're not afraid of death. But when your soul is dead, when your eyes are already dead, when you look to death, and when you try to find life in this world without any reference to our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, you know you're dead. And therefore you're uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. So they don't want to hear about death. Even though all know it and experience it every day. There's news about death every day on our TVs. We know about death all the time. There's suicides and murders and wars and rumors of wars. As our Lord said in Matthew chapter 24 would be the case towards the end of times which is our times. <laughs> We're blind. Blind like Samson. About the reality of death. We must face death. The Catholic Church is the only church that knows how to face death. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only man who knows how to face death. In his physical and his mystical body, he came and met death. And as we say on Holy Saturday, quoted from the sacred scripture, Christ speaks to death. He says, O mors, ero mors tua. O death, I will be your death. Death, thou shalt die. We know about death. We know about it. We wear the color black. Why? Because of the night. Two reasons we wear black. Many other reasons, but two will give. Because in the night, we cannot see. The world is just as real at night as it is in the day doesn't stop. When you turn out the lights at night, you don't lose your furniture, you don't lose your walls, you don't lose your door, you don't lose your house. They're all there. You just can't see them because of the night. And so wherefore we put black upon the body, we put black upon the vestments because it is night. Robert Woodall is here now. His soul is here. The angels are here. All of the dead are still around. They are in eternity. Many of them are now burning in the fires of hell. Others are in the kingdom of heaven. And others are in the fires of purgatory being purified before they enter the kingdom of heaven. But not one soul is gone. It is only night to us. Our eyes being weak, we cannot see, but they're there. Therefore we have black to remind us of the night. That in the night, we the reality is still there. It's just that our eyes are weak and we cannot see. Then, of course, the light of heaven is greater than any light on earth. And therefore, light here is as darkness. And hence, black. What about this death? 
We're in a world of death. Where the answer to death is the Lord Jesus Christ. The answer to death is the Holy Roman Catholic Church. The answer to death is the life of grace. We know the answer. As we'll say in the Holy Mass, when we get to the canon of the Mass, to the, to the singing of the preface, Vita mutator non tolitor. Life is changed, not taken away. And what does our Lord Jesus Christ say to Martha? Wonderful Martha in the Gospel of St. John. What does he say? Do you not believe? Whoever believes in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? Martha is a smart girl. We've been mentioned many times. Lazarus believes in our Lord Jesus Christ. He died. Not only was he dead, he was four days in the tomb. And Martha said, don't roll back the stone because he stinketh. He's rotting. He's dead. And Martha should say, well, my brother believed in you. My brother took care of you whenever you came to the city of Jerusalem. He's dead. And you're telling me, whoever believes in me shall not taste death forever. He does not say that we shall not taste death. We shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? Our Lord Jesus Christ is God. He became man for what purpose? To taste death. He could not die as God, but he could die as man. Therefore he became man in order that he might taste death. Why does he taste it? That he might defeat it, that he might destroy it. But we're in a world which is terrified of death. Why? Because the vast majority of souls today hate God. The vast majority of souls today live without God and they don't want to be with God. They want their heaven here on earth and this heaven is coming to an end. You see the ladies in the airports, 173 years old, wearing a miniskirt. It doesn't work at the age of 173. You cannot act like you're 16 at the age of 173, no matter how good your hearing aids are, etc. All are going to death. But they don't want to, they want to pretend like they're not going to die. But all are going to die. What are we going to do about it? Prepare for it. And let this death be a transformation. And if I die at the age of 5, at the age of 15, at the age of 25, the age of 55, the age of 105, it doesn't matter. If my soul is ready for God. Because then we go into eternity forever with God. We're made for Him. We're made to give Him glory. That's why we're here. We're not made for anything else. So many people in the world today, they have their jobs, they have their paychecks, they have their pensions, they have their house, they have their cell phones, they have their computers. They're all alone and they're empty and they live in the shell of death. Our Lord says of our age, you are whited sepulchers. You look like white and clean on the outside, but it's just rotting on the inside. There's no life. There's no life in our world today. The only life that comes is the life of grace, the life of God. Samson one day forgot that. He had great strength. One day he picked up the entire gates of the city. He carried them to the top of the mountain. With the jawbone of an ass, he killed 300 soldiers. He could not be defeated. But what happened to him? One day he became impure. He was seduced by a lady, by, by Delilah. And finally, he told the truth of his, the secret of his strength, which was in his hair. And he became blind. He really became physically blind because what happened to him is that when he got his, cut, his hair cut, he was easily defeated, the scripture tells us. Delilah could beat him up. He could defeat armies before. But once he gave up the secret of his strength, Delilah could defeat him. And it says in the sacred scripture, he was easily defeated. He was easily captured. He was easily tied up. The great and strong Samson. And he, in order that he not be troubled, they took a spoon. And they pulled out his eyes. And made him blind. And so they have done with the Catholic Church today. And so they have done with modern men. We are blind. You turn on the TV and you watch the History Channel. And you watch the PBS. And you watch the stupidity of these guys in the suits. Claim they have PhDs and they're idiots, they're morons. But because you're more stupid, you think they're smart. And therefore, you listen to them. And what do they do? They tell stupid lies. But it's recorded in the St. Apollo's letter to Timothy. 
He said, at the end of time, says St. Paul, the second letter to Timothy, they shall have itching ears, and they shall heap up themselves liars, telling them what they want to hear. They want to hear there's no difference between boy and girl. They want to hear they don't need to use separate bathrooms nowadays. They want to hear that there's no problem with homosexuality. They want to hear there's no problem with being, being living together outside of marriage. They want to hear there's no problem with worshiping false gods. There's no problem with not being pleasing to God and not saying your prayers in the rosary. There's no problem with not going to church and going to mass on Sundays. There's no problem with being displeasing to God in every manner possible. So long as you think you're good. And everything is explained by some kind of scientific stupidity because atoms and molecules are bouncing around and they will have itching ears and they will heap over themselves liars. And they will be liars and lovers of lies. This is our world. But if you go back 2,000 years ago, you will find a man who stood in front of Pilate and said, I am the truth. Art thou a king? I am a king. Thou sayest it. For this was I born. For this came out of the world, that I might bear witness unto the truth. Whoever is of the truth hears my voice. And the modern world doesn't want to hear his voice. But it's still the only voice that brings peace. It's still the only voice that answers all the troubles of the heart. It's the only answer to the temptations of suicide. The only answer to the temptation of, the, of, of various forms of depression. Medication isn't going to fix the world. It makes the pharmaceutical companies rich. It doesn't fix the world. Christ is the only answer. His faith is the only answer. We're in a dead world. It's dead. And Samson forgot that his power came from God. And Samson was blinded by the sins of the flesh. And Samson, who was so strong, became blind. And was led by a little boy. We read in the book of Judges. It was a little boy that led him. Because he didn't need a bunch of soldiers. But what happened. It's what's happening to souls secretly right now. His hair was slowly growing back. And if you look at the world around right now. Men have turned away from God and they hate him. They join all false religions. They look for a false peace charismatic movements and standing in front of churches and screaming up and down, singing hallelujah and hallelujah, like some kind of being on drugs. They look for some kind of simple, the fast feeling of good, trying to feel good, but it's not working. And many souls are looking for the truth, but they don't know where to find it. They don't know where to find it. And the hair of the church is slowly growing back, while it remains blind, while it remains tired, one day the Blessed Virgin Mary is going to have her great victory in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, which is now in a great, horrible, greatly terrible state. And it's going to come a great victory. The hair is slowly growing back, but it remains blind. And Samson, at the last of his days, he said to the little boy, I am tired. I am tired. What was he tired of? He was tired of impurity. He was tired of the promises of the modern world. He was tired of being with a wicked world that did not want God and did not want truth. He was tired of being away from God and forgetting from whence his strength came. He said, let me lean against the two central columns that support this building of Philistines. And so the boy led him against the two central columns. And then Samson prayed. He said, Lord, give me back my former strength. Give me back my former strength. And then he took those, his, his, those columns and he pulled them down. And the scripture tells us he killed more in death than he killed in life. And Samson was the first one to show that death, which was such a horrible punishment for sin, could become something powerful. That death was such a terrible punishment for sin and the tragic ending of our lives could be some the beginning of a great victory. And he was the first great type of Christ in his death. He leaned against columns as Christ leaned against the cross. And he shook the columns as Christ shook the entire world. And he brought more enemies of God to death in his own death than he had killed in life. And he brought power into death. And he 
began to see again with supernatural eyes. These eyes are going to come back to our church, and they must come back to souls. Try drug, sex, and rock and roll. Everyone else is. They already have. They're bored of it. Try the promises of the modern world. These idiots that change their foolish teachings every day. It's emptiness, emptiness, emptiness all around. The only answer is to come back to Christ. We're not going to be protected by our government. We're not going to be protected by these foolish militias. We're not going to be protected by those who are against the government. We're not going to be protected by those that are in favor of the government. We're not going to be protected by the metal detectors, by the TSA guys in the airports. We're not going to be protected by these foolish states, by the police state. We are protected by our holy faith. We are protected by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are protected by his holy mother. A man is different from the animals because he has a mind. A man is different from the animals because he can think, because he can reason. And it's there is where death is, and there is where life is. The modern public school system is making the modern minds of youth dead. We must bring their life, their mind back to life. They must learn to think again, learn to use their reason. We're going to see the world and how its beautiful harmony rises our minds and hearts naturally up to God. To see there's only one world made by God, made for God, for his greater glory. And that those who unite themselves to his holy church, those who believe his holy faith, they are going to be great souls who will make a difference in the entire world. We don't make a difference by inventing some new kind of plastic toy or some new kind of drug. We make a difference by knowing, loving, and serving God. And turning our eyes away from the things of this world down, back up towards heaven. And then death is defeated. And death becomes something wonderful. We refer to it in the lives of the saints as the day of birth. The day in which the soul was born and carried from this world up into heaven. That's what it's supposed to be, but it isn't now for the majority of souls. Now is an opportunity to come back to the holy truth of the gospel. There's no other answer to the world's trouble. To come back to the holy truth of the Holy Mother of the Church, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. To come back to the truth that has been handed down to us for the last 6,000 years since Adam, even though Adam sinned, he repented of his sin. So therefore, he was the first human head of the church and he remained so until he died. And that church continues until the end of time. First the Old Testament version and now the New Testament the Catholic Church. And it shall continue the end of time. And we're in a time of itching ears. It don't have itching ears anymore. It hasn't worked. I say faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ, faithful to the church. And he will bless us. And then we all can be delivered from the fires of darkness, fires of hell, and be brought into the kingdom of heaven. And remember, the only way to happiness and the only way to understand uh, the errors of our modern world and to come to Christ is through his holy mother. The Blessed Virgin Mary is the only way. She's the one who carried Christ inside of her for nine months. She's the one that stood at the foot of the cross, watching him die. She's the one who had seven sorrows. She's the one that turned to the apostles and said at the very beginning of the public ministry, do whatever he tells you. And if she didn't say, do whatever he tells you, none of us could do anything. Somehow we had to hear our mother say those words in the gospel, do whatever he tells you. What are we going to do? Our Lord said, fill the water box. That's not that complicated. We don't understand because we're idiots. But when the mother turns and says, he said, fill the water pots. Do it. Do whatever he tells you. Whoever turns their ears to Mary will hear the commands of Christ and be able to fulfill them. Whoever turns the eyes of the Blessed Virgin Mary will be able to see Christ in his entirety. Not just a little toe or a part of his fingernails, but every part of him. Whoever listens to Mary hears every word that he speaks. Whoever follows Mary follows Christ. She brings us completely to him and totally to him. And we need her to understand our Lord. Particularly at the time of struggles. We're in a dying world. The world is growing old like Samson. The world is growing tired. The world is exhausted. The world is blind. The world needs to come back to the pillars of the truth. Those pillars that Samson held on to are the pillars of truth. The pillars of the divine truth. The Old and New Testaments. The pillars of divine truth. And we can hold on to those pillars. And with those pillars, we can shake and defeat the enemies of God. 
those ten pillars, we can win the war. The Blessed Virgin Mary leads us to them and gives us the victory. In any case, pray for Mr. Woodall as we go here, the long drive afterward, down to Casa Grande. And remember, on the way down, say the rosary. At the end of the Mass today, uh, the, there will be the blessing of the body. The conclusion of the blessing of the body, we, we go out to the cars and then we'll go down to Casa Grande. There will be a brief period at the end where we'll put the American flag back on the body at the very end there. And, and then, but what we'll do is there'll be a brief period of a gap between at the very end when we go to the cars because we're going to have to pick up the items that we have and put them into our vehicle. And it won't take too long, but it'll be a few minutes gap. And then we'll go down to Casa Grande to the um, graveyard. So in any case, we can leave here the Mass, praying for Mr. Woodall. Then afterwards, Libra Me, the strengthening and blessing of the sacred body. And then afterwards, we go to down to the cemetery. Then there's just a, a few minutes of collecting the items and then down to the cemetery in Casa Grande. So I bless you all then and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.